Hello everyone. In today's presentation, I'm going to demonstrate how would you perform a login activity. Imagine that you have an application something like this, where you're supposed to provide username and password. Then you need to evaluate your data with the database that is available in the cloud. If it is a valid credential, then the next activity should get open. Otherwise, it should stay you bring you back to this particular activity and you have been prompted again to enter the password. So let's make a try. Let's try out some of the any one of the users that is available in the database. So let me go by my name. Okay. So let me provide the input. Let me provide the password as well. And let's see what happened this time. I will hit the button submit. As I do that, it gets connected and automatically we are in the next activity. So that since our credential was valid, that's the reason the activity got open. Let me terminate myself from this application. I will click the exit button that will bring me back to the login screen. And here am I. Suppose I'm going by some other credential which is not existing in the table. Let's see what happened in this time. The progress dialog box is working and it says with a proper message called invalid user. So that means our login activity is working pretty fine. So now I will demonstrate how this whole thing is going to work. So, all of the videos in the Volley API have used the Volley service. The same thing the Volley API have used in the login activity as well. At first, I will be having a URL where I will be having my PHP page residing, and we are using the triple zero webhost.com, the free domain hosting site. So, let me take you to that particular website. This is their database part. Let me bring you to there. This is the table how I get through. If I go to the web hosting part or the file hosting part, here it is. I have a project folder that is what stated in the URL, and inside that I have a login.php and here it is. Let me first explain you the code of login.php. Like all other video, I have connected my database with MySQL and so connect, which takes four arguments. The first argument telling me where is my database located valid user the password associated with that user and the database that i have created the request method which i am sending from android is post request dot method dot post let me show you that even in the volley uh, service we have seen that the string request the first argument is request the method dot post so both methodology are equally matched with the both end of application i'm going to send two input from the Android and the key for those input would be username and password as we all have seen that in order to pass input from the volley we need to make use of something called get params let me scroll down here it is the get params is a system defined function which I need to overwrite and I'm using the map structure for sending the input and inside the map, I have created a variable called map type called params where I'm storing the input that is given by the user in the form of edit text. I have got two edit text and I'm receiving the content of those edit text right in the variable called et1 and et2 respectively, which are also edit text. And then I'm typecasting them after the typecasting is over. I'm fetching the value from the respective edit text into two string variables s1 and s2. These two string variables. I am passing it in the form of get params. Within that, I have a method called params.put, and here is my key. This is a key which should match with the uh, and with the PHP end as well. So these keys are similar. So once the keys are common, the data will be fetched from the respective key and will be stored in this PHP variable. As we all know, that PHP variable start with the dollar sign. So the username and password eventually got stored. In our previous video, we also have seen that uh, in order to work with your MySQL, you have to create a string argument statement and that has to be stored in a PHP variable and that's what I have done in this particular line. 
So there is a table called user underscore TBL. Let me show you even that. So this is the table called user underscore TBL, which has got three attributes out of which I'm using username and password. So here are they. The username should get matched with the username that I have given in this particular PG variable. And similarly, the password should also match. This whole string got stored inside the dollar SQL variable. Now please take a note of how am I writing the format. It should be wrapped in a single quote, then followed by a double quote, and finally by a pre -ed. That's how the statement has been wrapped with, a variable has been wrapped with. And then we are writing MySQL as a query, which has got two arguments. The first one is telling where from to do and what to do. Once I have done that, I will be getting a return value. Now, it's not confirmed the return value would be there. Let's assume I have given a wrong credential, so obviously nothing will be over here. So in that case, the next method mysql underscore fetch underscore array is not going to work and hence the variable dollar check will not be set and in that case the else part will be executed which will return a value called failure. Otherwise, the data will be there in this PHP variable henceforth mysql underscore fetch underscore array is going to work and the record will be over here in dollar check and that will set the variable and the condition will be true. So once we are returning back to Android, obviously there is no point of opening, keeping the connectivity open. So I will be closing it and I'm returning a value called success. Now these, either of the input will be going to Android and this input I need to evaluate. And for that, let's get back to Android. We have already seen that in Volley, there are two important classes are there, request queue and string request. Okay, so request queue is responsible for generating the queue handling and the manipulation of threads. Whereas on the other hand, string request is responsible for handling the inputs taken and the return value that we are going to receive. And the return value will be stored within the function uh, parameter response that is there uh, within the uh, function called on response. And here we are evaluating that is the response that I have received is equal to the given string or not. If it is so, then obviously we will give a call to intent and we will move to the next activity. Had that not been so, I will give a call to the else part and this will give a call to a function called show message where two parameters means passed. The first one represents the title. This is the alert dialog box and the second parameter which I am sending is a message called invalid user. And If I scroll down, you will see the alert dialog box and these two arguments respectively got stored over here and then we are creating a builder reference and that will eventually create all the, uh, all the, all the representation and then finally the dialog box will be getting displayed provided you are not a valid user. But imagine, as we all know, that we are accessing internet, so there might be a time when the page of 000 web host is not available. In that case, this particular segment of piece of code is going to work. So as we already saw that we are evaluating the work with the help of internet, so the internet permission also needs to be there. So when write your permission, the internet has to be there. So that was how the login part was working. So everything is going well, then you are being connected. So let me just check out for the last time once again. Let me see in your valid user, Raj Aryan is there. So let me try out that one. And hopefully the internet connection is still working fine. In that case, we will be connecting into the application. We might see some of the messages in the page that is not there. Yeah, it's working pretty smooth and fine. So we got inside our main activity. And this is the navigation drawer. So you can see that the navigation drawer has been implemented once you have successfully connected into your application. So keep this thing in mind, that's how the design structure should be and I wish that you people would be doing the same thing. So let's wait for my next video. Until then, have a nice time.